Welcome back. This is a new series of tutorials I'm hoping to put together. I'm trying to learn how to use Unreal Engine and uh, want to use it in my classroom in my programming two courses. So this is kind of combining some things that I put together from reading some books and watching some other kind of you YouTube tutorials and and looking at some discussion boards and I want to put together a I guess demo of Unreal Engine <clears throat> and it's going to be similar to like a small escape room with some things to kind of hopefully learn and teach some fundamentals of Unreal Engine. I'm by no means an expert of any of this this is just kind of how I'm learning how to use this engine and hopefully it can help some of you out there so for this first episode or this first video I'm just gonna begin creating from the beginning so I open up Unreal Engine and find new project categories I want to select games that's selected then I'll click next and just to get started, I will select this first person example, this template that's on there, and it's going to help me get started since I'm not feeling comfortable enough to know how to put together a blank project by myself yet. First person, click next. Looking in here, uh, I do want to use blueprint for this to make it kind of easier to understand. For quality, maximum quality is fine for right now. I'm going to have ray tracing disabled currently just to help this not be slowed down too much. Desktop and console and I want the starter content available to me the project for this this uh, by default on the bottom it'll put it into your documents folder and then on real projects or wherever you've specified it to for the name of this particular project I will call this escape room demo and it'll be something I'll just continue to build with as I learn more about this create project it'll take a moment and it'll open up the editor here shortly here we are at the editor this is Unreal Engine this is what it looks like when you're in here there's a few things that uh, you'll want to kind of be aware of I'm just going to move this panel down. These are all resizable, all these panels. And each one does different things. Obviously, the save current, that's something we want to do often so we don't lose anything. Uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, the world outliner, this is everything that is in our build right here, everything that's included in this template. For example, editor cube 11 right here, editor cube 9. Any of these I can I can select one of those and it highlights it in my window and tells me information that I can edit in the bottom right hand corner in the details. Each item has different attributes. If you want to take a closer look at it, you select one on there and you can search for them up here also. So if you don't want to take the time to scroll through it all, and I knew that I wanted to select in here uh, editor cube 8 for example I just start typing it in and it limits the responses so I would select what I wanted to find click on it once and then press F and it's gonna zoom me into that object I can then look at this object I can look at all the attributes in details about it also. 
So now that I'm zoomed in very close, I can use my scroll wheel of my mouse to zoom in and zoom out. That's useful to know. If I use the left mouse button, I can walk forward and back, I guess, and I can also look side to side using the left mouse button. If I use the uh, if I use the right mouse button, I can also look in all directions with that. So that's kind of good to know uh, for those type of things. So kind of using the mouse and clicking and dragging and then using the scroll wheel, I can look around and navigate through here. It's a little cumbersome to learn how to use at the beginning, but that's fine. Uh, it, you know, as with all things, it just takes a little bit of practice. If I hold down the uh, right mouse button and I use my A and D, I can pan left and right, and then S goes back and W goes forward. So for me, what I usually like to do, kind of holding down the mouse, the right mouse button. I'll hold that down and then I use my ASDW uh, to to kind of move around and then that mouse wheel is also handy. So take a moment to kind of learn how to how to use that and that's kind of how you're able to find the different elements in here and uh, see what they do. We'll learn about these attributes and these details later. Uh, down here at the bottom we have the content browser and this includes everything for this build that's in the game that we can bring into it's like things included in Unreal but are not necessarily um, easily findable so you can click on content and you click on first person and then there's your character and then you go into there and there's textures that you can use and then it just gives you the file tree here where you can uh, click on content and go to that view um, there's also the add-in import so you can bring things into there for that uh, if you click on this little this little orange button when you mouse over it I think it's handy to have that available. This is your files here, and it's just showing you the exact same thing that is found here in our content. And everything in here is searchable also. So it's it makes it easy to find things if it if you don't want to take the time to click in a folder and go into another folder to go into another folder, you can always search for it up here. And anytime you're in a folder, so if I go into materials and I search here, it's only going to look for the things in this material folder here. So if I want to search for something out of all the folders, I just go back to content and it takes me back to this kind of highest level of the file tree. That will be useful for later also. Uh, finally on the left hand side here, we have uh, these different items that we can put into our build. These are just kind of different different elements, shapes. If you've used, you know, kind of any 3D building software, uh, you're probably familiar with bringing in different shapes and you just click and drag them there. Uh, there's basic shapes, there's, you can read it all, lights, cinematic, all that. And we'll be taking advantage of those features for our for our uh, escape room also okay uh, so that is the interface to use this um, I wanted to take a moment also if I click save current and then if I go up here to the play button uh, the play button here is then going to allow me to preview this game when I go in here. So I just kind of wanted to take a moment, you know, using the mouse, using ASDW, or using the arrows if you need to also. Um, you can kind of go through this 
and test out the controls. ASDW move us around in this in this template. Spacebar jumps. Uh, using the mouse will aim you around and you can look up and you can see there's the sun up there. Uh, something that kind of resembles a light source. There's these clouds above there. There's these walls and we're aiming a weapon and so if I kind of walk around and I fire the weapon with the left uh, with the left mouse it's a little bit loud I don't know if that's coming through on the audio hopefully that's not too terribly loud or it may not be coming through it at all but when you try it you'll hear the sound it's just kind of a little uh, type of tennis ball or something I guess but you'll notice when you attack these blocks they're moving around when I run into the blocks you know it's not real easy to push them around but we notice that they move uh, if I go over to the wall you know the ball comes straight back at a at a higher velocity the the walls not moving this this wall here isn't moving um, these things all cast shadows we can see that so uh, go in there and kind of play around with it and see what there is in this little sandbox I guess and the the two I guess the two main things that we want to look at are just these structures some of them are movable and it appears the bigger they are the harder they are to move and then uh, there's there's the floor there's these walls and then there's these blocks in here also all right when you're done playing around with that you can press escape and it'll take you out of that preview and then we go back here into our into our view for this and then we can go back to looking around so the reason why I wanted us to look at those objects is we're shooting them and everything and some of them move and some of them are stationary. If I click on these blocks, so I'll start, you know, just for example, these white blocks, all right, these smaller ones. If I click on that, these are all showing up when I select them, like we mentioned before. They're showing up in our world outliner. All right, and the, each of them appears to be called editor cube by a number. All right, these are something that could be brought over here. But when I have these selected, and let me just kind of move this up, and we look on the right hand side for the details. All right, there's a bunch of things here. We have location, that'll be a little important, a little more important later. On one of the next tutorials but we have X Y and Z for location rotation scale uh, when we look at mobility these say movable all right so movable is selected all right and then when I scroll down right now currently uh, in here you do see like the materials there's there's a static mesh it's a cube it says materials and it says cube material override which appears to be the same color is those and then also when I scroll down and look at physics it has simulate physics is activated on here all right and it and it gives us some other things that we can toggle on and off we also have collision down here where we couldn't run through those blocks so simulate generates hit event um, and then when we look here, can character step up on? Yes, so we would be able to stand on the top of that. Um, collision presets, physics actor, all these different settings. All right. Now, if I compare that, for example, all of these Y cubes that we were able to shoot, and they all moved. If you if you test that out, you'll notice that they all move. But if I go here to this bigger block. On here they call it big wall so we have walls I'm assuming wall one through four are the four walls surrounding our little sandbox area here our template uh, we have the floor which is this one down here and 
these all kind of act the same. We have we have those walls, and then we also have big wall two, and then this over here is big wall one. All right, and these are all found in the arena folder up here, and they all say static mesh actor. Looking in here, uh, we can find that these here for mobility they say static on there. It's not stationary. It's not movable. These are static. When I mouse over it, it says a static object can't be changed in game. Allows baked sliding, fastest rendering. So these these can't move around, which is why, although they were large, even if they were smaller and we shrunk it down, we wouldn't be able to move that object. Also, when I look down here, simulate physics is not checked. All right, and uh, that's going to be important for some things later. Okay, so to get us started, that's all I want to show us on this first video. Uh, hopefully, you are able to, you know, take the time, uh, go get your Epic Games launcher, install Unreal. It's free. Uh, get this thing running and updated and everything, and be able to enter into the game or enter into the engine. Uh, go through those, look at these little menus, make sure that you're able to use the keyboard to navigate around, spend a little bit of time doing that, and uh, using the, like I said, when I use this, I go with the mouse and the ASDW. In theory, you could use your keyboards to help you out with that if you don't have a mouse or if you're on a laptop but I would highly recommend uh, using the mouse and the in the keyboard to help you out with that and then go through play the game try that see how it works make sure you can get in and out of that make sure you're aware of saving current and that you're able to kind of look at those details of our different items in our world outliner on the next tutorial that we have, we will go one step further and we'll start kind of looking at how to build a layout using these items in the level as something to uh, like a level that can house our, our escape room. Thanks for checking out this tutorial and uh, let me know what you think and if it's helpful or if it's not and I'll hopefully catch you on the on the next one that I release thanks for watching